What is up you handsome people, I am Leaky Tatsman and this is another This Week in Gaming, number 28, I believe. I don't believe, I know. I know, I checked. Anyway, for those of you unacquainted, this is a series of videos where I tell you what has gone on in the world of games within the week. So, news rumours, speculation, in one easy to digest video. And golly gosh, there has been a lot going on this week, and I'm going to start with what is probably my favourite news. And that is that the Elder Scrolls Online has officially been announced. So this is an MMO, those of you that don't know what an MMO is, it's a massively multiplayer online game. So thousands of people can play at any one time. And although not the conventional co-op that many Elder Scrolls fans may have been screaming out for, it's still a massive announcement. But I'll give you some information about the game. It takes place a millennium before Skyrim. It will take place across all of Tamriel. So that basically includes past regions such as Skyrim and the place from Oblivion, which the name eludes me, Cyrodiil maybe, I I've no idea, I can't really remember stuff like that. Anyway, yeah, so in terms of physical space, it sounds massive. It's going to feature three factions that are warring against each other and you're trying to vie for control of the entire place. It's got player versus player combat, which I guess would be a standard given. It's a 2013 release for the PC and Mac and it's being developed by Zenimax Online. These guys did Dark Age of Camelot, which although I never played, I heard very, very good things about it. So it looks to be in capable hands, although the screenshots suggest that it's going to be a bit of a World of Warcraft clone, which I really hope isn't the case. It's starting to look quite generic. But I mean, on name alone, this game should be a viable competitor to World of Warcraft. So it'll be interesting to see the kind of reception that it gets. Okay, also this week... Black Ops 2 finally got officially announced after being leaked for weeks and weeks. Activision released a debut trailer, it shows morsels of gameplay and it looks to be in the future, I believe the year is 2025 that it's going to be set in, although it will contain some flashbacks to the 80s or 70s. It's definitely the November 13th release date that I alluded to the other week. And supposedly the story is going to feature viable choices and different outcomes, so you can actually take a decision and it will have an effect on the game. Something which I suggested in my wish list all those months ago, so Treyarch, I'm glad you listened, I'm going to notch that one down to me. You can thank me later. Another little bit of news with that game, there's a new tactical mode, I think it's called Strike Force, where it seems to incorporate elements of real-time strategy games, which sounds kind of interesting, but then they announced that it's single player only, which is kind of not interesting. Okay, some kind of crummy news, Bayonetta 2 has supposedly been cancelled. Now this is due to the ongoing financial troubles at Sega, as they are having redundancies across America and Europe. And although Bayonetta 2 is not the only casualty, supposedly, again this is just a rumour, it's probably the most high profile one, as the other projects were either unannounced or of no real significance. Now I tried the demo of Bayonetta, I thought it was quite good, but it's not really my kind of game. But I know it had quite a niche following, and they would be pretty bummed out if this news was true. But you know, that's the world we live in now, where finance is everything. So is it disappointing? Yes. But is it surprising? Not really. And I'm going to keep coming with the crummy news, because I'm just a bad guy like that. Valve have confirmed that they're not going to be announcing anything new at E3, so that means no Portal 3, no Left 4 Dead 3, no Half-Life 3. Whether this is all a ruse or not, I do not know, but I'm going to pretty much say that it's not a ruse because otherwise they'd probably give a coy response like, oh, we don't comment on rumours or speculation, blah, 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 the usual jargon they give. But an outright denial suggests that no, they're not going to announce anything at E3 and surprise us. And in my opinion, E3 is kind of losing its allure as the epic gaming announcement hub that it once was. Don't get me wrong, it is still an exciting time in gaming, but each year it seems to be more and more disappointing, especially with the big three conferences, that's Microsoft, Sony and Nintendo. So I hope they can pull it out of the bag this year. Alright, another thing this week, a standalone expansion for Saints Row 3 is coming. It is called Enter the Dominatrix, quite classy, as Saints Row always is. It's picking up where Saints Row the third left off, and it sees an alien warlord, Zinyak, capturing the leader of the Saints and imprisoning him in an elaborate virtual reality simulation. And although I won't read the whole quote about the expansion, it ends with, Here you are a slave, welcome to the Dominatrix. Very mysterious. It's going to retail at $30, not sure about Great British Pounds or Euros, and no release date as of yet, but there will be more details soon.
I think that's quite a cool announcement. I'm always down for some more Saints Row. I love the games. I'm hoping the fact that it is a standalone expansion means that it's some sizable content like the Grand Theft Auto ones. But I am somewhat pessimistic seeing as Saints Row is quite synonymous with small DLC. So hopefully they can pleasantly surprise us. And some more minor boringy stuff. A new Xbox 360 bundle is coming, it's going to be $99 up front with a $15 a month fee for two years and you get two years of Xbox Live Gold with that. So it was a completely new model for buying a games console and to be honest it seems like it's kind of testing the water for the next Xbox and although personally I'm not a big fan of paying incrementally, I prefer just to pay everything up front, it's obviously a good option for people that don't have the disposable income to pay everything at once, so more options are better I guess, no one's forcing you to buy this, hopefully it just doesn't become standard, although I'm pretty sure it won't. And God of War Ascension, which I mentioned about last week, is going to be getting a competitive multiplayer mode, which is kind of like king of the hill from what i've read and seen but the hill is like a giant bloody monster so a bit more unique than your average multiplayer game and although god of war is one of the games that i'd have thought would be the last to get multiplayer i still think it could be quite interesting i mean look at splinter cell i'd have never pictured that having great multiplayer but the spies versus merc stuff was some of the best we saw last gen and also, a couple of quickies. South Park the game is now going to be called South Park the Stick of Truth. No idea what the name derives from. And the original Deus Ex is going to be coming to the PlayStation Network. This was leaked by a Peggy listing, which actually listed the game as coming out on May the 1st, which is obviously passed, but I'm assuming that was just a placeholder date. And one thing I'm definitely hoping for is the fact that they are going to release it in HD, because the game looks incredibly dated but the gameplay is pretty incredible and the choices you get within the game show how limited a lot of games are nowadays so I'd be very interested to give it a try and fully recommend if it does come out in HD for each of you to try it. And that is more or less everything that's gone on this week in the world of games. As always I'd love to hear your input on what's gone on. Do you think the new Elder Scrolls Online looks good? What would it take for you to give it a try? Do you think it will knock World of Warcraft off its perch? Or how about Black Ops 2, do you think that the move into the future is a good one? Or would you prefer to go back in the timeline to more of the 70s style of the original? Or how about E3 and the fact that it seems to get less exciting every year? So as always, I'd look forward to your comments. I love to talk games, so hit me with your best shot, as Pat Benatar once said. So if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you like me, please subscribe. And if you could also follow me on Twitter, that would be quite pleasing to my insides. Okay, thanks for watching and peace out.